Most multicellular organisms begin their life as a single cell whose progeny reliably self-assemble into highly complex anatomies with many organs and tissues in precisely the same arrangement every time. Each cell can only interact with their neighboring environment through its cell membrane and, based on the signal that it receives from the neighbors and its internal state, is able to understand what kind of cells to be and self-regulate. Despite the limited information at the disposal of every single cell, incredibly complex organisms are formed. This ability is the most fundamental skill every multicellular creature possesses and it's arguably the most striking example of self-organization. In 1951, when he was working in self-replication, John von Neumann invented the model called Cellular Automaton to try to provide a theory on biological development and it has proven over the time to be one of the best models of life. But what is a Cellular Automaton? A cellular automaton is a grid of cells, each of which has an internal state. The only requirement is that the next state of each cell depends only on its previous state and the state of its neighbors. This is analogous of what real cells do. Von Neumann automaton was capable of self-replication but used 29 different states and a rather complicated dynamics. A simpler and more popular cellular automaton called the Game of Life was invented by Conway in 1980 and this is what happens if you let it run. The output of the Game of Life resembles what you will see if you look at some microbes through a microscope, hence the name. Cells in biological organisms follow rules which are encoded in their DNA. Unfortunately, these rules cannot be modeled by simple mathematical functions. For this reason, scientists made a more refined version of the cellular automata model discussed before, which is called neural cellular automata. A neural cellular automata, or NCA for short, starts from a single seed cell, which then expands and evolves into the final shape, in this case a lizard. In this model, the state of each cell is represented by a vector with 16 components. The first four components represent the RGB channels of the image, and the last 12 represent hidden values that are not visible by the naked eye. These values can represent nutrients, hormone concentrations, or chemical potentials, and are used by the cellular automaton to pass information between its cells. The alpha channel is the transparency of each pixel, and it has a special meaning. It tells us if a cell is mature, growing, or empty. Cells having alpha greater than 0.1 are considered mature, their neighbors are considered growing, and all the other cells are considered empty. Empty cells have the state vector equal to 0. We say that mature and growing cells are alive because it is where the CA rule is applied. The update rule of NCA is modeled with a neural network. This allows us to learn its parameters with gradient-based optimization by comparing the final shape that the NCA produced with the target shape that we want to reach and backpropagating the error. This way, we can train the NCA to reach the target image after some steps. We can view the parameters of the update rule in NCAs to have the same role that the DNA has in real-life organisms, which is what differentiates one organism from the other. The output of the update rule, on the other hand, is analogous to the expression of the genome, which is the image that the NCA produces. Because of these remarkable similarities between NCA and real-life organisms, this model is able to reproduce many of the properties that we see in nature, for example, we can train an NCA to be able to regenerate a missing limb, which is similar to what salamanders manage to do in real life. Another interesting property of NCA is that they have a mechanism similar to aging. In fact, depending on how you train the NCA, you get different results. For example, growing NCAs 
grow into a final state and then decay. This represents growing and aging biological organisms. These NCAs can be considered mortal because after some time the system decays. There are also persistent NCAs which grow into a final state and keep it for an infinite amount of time. This is equivalent to an unaging organism, like for example lobsters, which have this property. Since NCAs are a good representation of living organisms, we can assume that if something works in an NCA, then chances are it will work on living organisms as well. So we can try to answer the question. Given a starting rule, can we change its properties and behavior? For example, changing the color or the shape or even both? Let's say we want to modify the behavior of an already grown organism by adding some new cells with slightly different weights, which, as said before, is equivalent to adding cells with slightly different DNA and see if they are able to steer the properties of the entire organism. And here are the results we obtained. As you can see, the cells learn to take over the entire organism to be able to accomplish their goal. In this case, the purple cells represent the new ones, while the orange cells the old ones. We can see that the purple cells expand in space and take over the old cells over time. These adversaries can be programmed to perform a different task, for example, changing the color of the organism. To be able to accomplish this, we had to generalize the model from Morditsev and all. Before, a cell state was represented by a state vector having the first four components representing the RGBA of the pixel. And the remaining were hidden channels that helped the CA pass information between its cells. If the alpha channel was bigger than 0.1, it means that the cell is alive, otherwise it's dead. If we are going to have two different cell types, we are going to need two different alpha channels, one for each cell type. Since a cell cannot be of both kinds at the same time, we chose that if alpha 1, which is the alpha value of the first kind of cell, is bigger than 0.1, then alpha 2 must be 0 and the cell update follows F1, and vice versa. So, a cell can be alive in only one channel. You can have a live cell that behaves like both. This is because if we interpret the two cells as having different DNA, then they must have different rules and there is no in-between. We also impose that a new cell can only grow near a mature cell of the same type. For example, cells of type 2 can only grow near mature cells of type 2, unless the space is already occupied by another mature cell. If we do the same reasoning for the orange cells, we get this. If you look closely, there are some magenta squares. They are the combination of light purple and light orange. These squares neighbor both kinds of mature cells. These cells have both alpha channels below 0.1 and follow an average of both rules. Keep in mind that neither update rules can directly influence their neighboring cells. So, the adversarial is forced to rely on changing its internal state in such a way that the original cells go through a process of apoptosis. Also, to make the job harder for the adversaries, we did so that they can't trivially discern the kind of an egg-boring cell. This method worked so well that we managed to make it work even by injecting one single cell into the system. Now let's take a closer look on how the adversarial cells take over the original cells and change the organism. In this example, we start by injecting the adversaries in a 2x2 square. 
the adversaries can't act directly on the neighboring cells, so they change their internal state in order to trigger the process of apoptosis in the original cells. Once the alpha channel of the neighboring cell goes below 0.1, a new adversarial can grow in that place and replace the old one. And the process goes on until all the cells are replaced with adversaries. In practice, however, these steps are much quicker and merged together. We also trained adversaries to edit organisms in many other ways and they all are oddly satisfying to watch. For example, we trained adversaries that cut off the tail of the lizard. Or even turn a bug into a butterfly. Note that in all of these examples, the starting position of the adversaries is always random, and the initial percentage of adversaries less than 1% of the original cells. We also performed other experiments, like stopping the aging of a growing NCA. For example, starting from this growing lizard, we train adversaries to stop the aging of the organism. In this case, the adversaries must perform the takeover before the organism decays. So, sometimes, a higher percentage of adversaries will be needed. This is the case of the firework, which decays much quicker. As a consequence, we need higher percentage of adversaries. The many similarities between neural cellular automata and real biological organisms may indicate that a more refined technique could be used to bioengineer already living organisms. For example, in the future, we might be able to inject agents in our body that will restore a missing limb, or add a completely new one, if you really want to. Other possibilities might be to stop aging, improve organ function or cognitive capabilities. To be able to reach this goal, however, the main challenge is to understand how the DNA and pharmacological reagents act at the low level. Once this is done, we can develop a computational model that emulates low-level cell behavior. With this program, we'll be able to input the desired changes at the high level and the program will calculate the low-level parameters to tune in order to reach the objective. And once this is done, we can apply it to the real organism. There has been some research that shows us that the information to perform tasks like stopping aging or regenerate major damage is already present in the organism. We only need to trigger the process. Adversaries, however, can also be used in this case. For example, we can inject adversaries near a missing limb and they will trigger the regeneration process and finally go away, leaving the space to the original cells. Or even better, we can create a sort of vaccine against damage, making the organism permanently able to regenerate. The possibilities are endless, and this could lead to exciting new work in medicine and computer science down the road. We hope that you enjoyed the talk. We also created a collab notebook where you can train your own adversarial model and play with the experiments. All the information are available by visiting this website, bit.ly slash elifogoku or by scanning the QR code. Finally, me and Francesco are currently looking for a job or PhD position, so if you are interested, please contact us.